It was flypaper in a can, and it went by the name of Stick'em. Freddy Blitnikoff comes to mind. My locker was right next to Freddy's. He would take Stick'em all over the forearms, all over that tape to make it a real sticky surface, and he would put it on the inside of his sock on each side, and that was his supply during the course of a game. When he needed Stick'em, he reached down and get the Stick'em off his socks. And then after the catch is his first pass, then you got to go right to the official and get a new ball and change balls. It was all sticky, and he was that way uh, the entire game, just a mess. The biggest thing was you were able to hold on to the ball when fighting with the defensive back, you know, and you had the opportunity to have the, the grip, the over, overwhelming grip on it, you know. So that was a good thing about it. And the worst thing was that he always had gum. Now his fingers are all filled up with stick them so there's no way he's gonna open up the gum so we always had to have somebody over there to open up it had to be two juicy fruits one wrigley or two spearmints one double mint someone asked me you know once the players get to stick them all over their hands and you know i mean it is so powerful how do they go to the bathroom <laughs> that was a good question he did not need stick a psychological thing with Freddie. He just thought he had to have it, but whatever makes you comfortable to play, and that was Freddie. In Super Bowl XI, the Hall of Fame receiver ran away with most valuable player honors. I came down from the box because we had won the game. I went over and hugged him. I had almost prized loose with a, uh, with a crowbar. I mean, he had so much stick him on. If you uh, shook hands with him after the game, you'd have to follow him into the shower because you couldn't get away from him. He had so darn much of that stuff on his hands. The only way to get the thing off, uh, get that stuff off, was with, uh, using regular paint and a paint thinner. Which makes you wonder what teammate Lester Hayes must have gone through. Lester just went overboard with that. I have pictures at home. He's in his crotch position, and he's got, it looks like webbed fingers. He bathed in it. He absolutely wore it. I mean, he just put stuff all over him and a thickness of that stuff everywhere. Hands and probably another guy that didn't need it. After the game, I used to go around, nice going, nice going. And I'd go around to Lester and say, nice going, but don't touch me. <laughs> in 1980, running back Arthur Whittington was supposed to throw an option pass. He couldn't throw it at all. <laughs> he was hesitating and couldn't get rid of the ball. So he kept it. Stick him on the ball was to blame. One more reason why following the 80 season, the NFL banned the sticky goo from the game. He was kind of hurt because they took it away from him. He's like a kid, you know, in a candy store and taking sucker away from him. You don't need that stuff. You don't need anything to help you. Uh, if you're a great player, you're a great player. In Super Bowl 18, Lester stuck to Art Monk like glue and the coverage sacks that resulted had nothing to do with Stick'em. I feel that Lester should be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. When you can uh, hold a guy like Monk down like that, uh, it, it's fantastic. The super tar of the stars, now a curious footnote in NFL history. I'm kind of happy that they banned it because he just was taking it all morning on a Monday just to clean the helmets.